Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, live from MagicCon Vegas 2023. The crew is in a hotel room with a janky but upgraded podcast setup. Today, we're going to talk about Commander and is Commander too casual now? Join with me is Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing, Seth? I am doing super good. Excited to uh, talk about some Commander and excited to be in Vegas and hanging out with everyone. Krim, the Asian Avenger. What's up? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes is up. Yes. Phil, Brewer's Kitchen. How are you feeling on American soil? Yeah, a little jet lagged, but it's always exciting to be here. Very exciting, actually. Tomer, Budget Commander, back in Vegas. Third time? Third time or fourth? I don't know. Fourth? It's been too uh, many. It's been, a, it's been a lot of times, but you know what? I'm really excited to be here because we're hanging out. It's the Goldfish Crew. We live all across the globe, so it's really cool to see everybody in person. It's like literally once a year that we actually get to all hang out, so it's really fun. And I'm your host, Richard, and I'll be guiding you through today's discussion. The Codfather. The Codfather. The Codfather. Once a year, we migrate into the sweaty hotel room. And we <laughs> Known as the fishbowl. <laughs> it's extra sweaty because we turn off the AC. We turn off the AC this. for recording, so yeah. you better appreciate it. Uh, before we get to it, though, today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Uh, are you tired of all the hassles involved with buy listing? Well, Card Conduit lets you skip. My phone turned off. Exactly. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing time and work associated with buy listing. With their curated service, you can send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of $1 or more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. And if you want to put a bit of effort in, you can use their sorted service, where you list and sort your cards in advance and pay just 2%. No matter which option you choose, <laughs> you get a detailed report Professional. with the result and fast payment once the order is processed. Oh yeah, you can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mpggoldfish. Wow, how'd you know that off the top of your Things head? Things are so without much harder without a anything. second monitor. You've impressive. read it so many times and wow. yet. <laughs> that was a natural. All right. Let, I want to go to Card Conduit. Let, let's cut to the chase here. Is Commander too casual now? The casual format. Have we gone too far. So we have a couple points to discuss. And first up, is rule zero ruining commander? So when something that you dislike comes up, rather than you know trying to fish for answers, trying to deck build around it, maybe you just propose to your group that we rule zero it out. Maybe we've done something like that with the One Ring in our previous <laughs> podcast. Literally, what, last what do you guys podcast. think? Like, is is Rule Zero kind of just allowing people to complain and vent, but like actually affect the game? I I think it's like the the joy in Magic is the puzzle building and the puzzle solving, right? And at least that's how I've always viewed Magic. And yeah, like I, I'm example, if I'm playing my Super Friends deck, I should probably be ready for the Immortal Sun. If I'm playing an Artifact deck, I should probably be ready for all the Vandal Blasts and all these other things with it, right? So uh, rather than just rule zero those cards out, I think I'm going to uh, take that into account when I'm deck building, right? But I feel rule zero is kind of just made it so if I just don't like it, you can't have it. I mean, I think you can go too far with rule zero. Maybe that's the point we've reached. Like, I think, yeah. like, rule zero has value, right? Like, right, right. Even on Commander Clash, we want our decks to, like, be roughly the same power. Or it's going to be, like, a much less fun game to play and to watch. So I think there's, like, value in that. But at the same time, like, I, there are, sometimes you see, like, TikToks or videos where people are talking about cards that I didn't even know, like, anyone thought were good, let alone a problem. And he's like, if anyone ever shows up at my commander table, rule zero, no, you're ruining the game. Like, Moto that's probably rooms, yeah, that's, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the huge list of no, like, any mechanic in Magic. So I think it does go too far a bit. I don't know. And, like, if you have a card that actively says nobody has fun anymore, like humility, that's that's a good use of rule zero or like what's the other one tabernacle or something okay, someone can afford that okay. yeah if you can, can afford, afford that you should probably still not play it just for the fun of the table if you say rule zero counter spells or vendor blast that would probably go too far and even rule zero elish one i hate it i play a lot of decks with etb but i am prepared for this i'm not too prepared for humility and even if i am the game is just so boring when it hits the board that there's just no upside to it. I know your Super Friends decks might like the card. Mine does. I hate it. It's just so unfun. Do you actually play Humility in Super Friends? 
Well, my Esper one, yeah. But that's my strongest <laughs> deck. <laughs> that's stated. That's stated, though. I tell everybody. It's a seven, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's definitely not a seven. It's definitely not a seven. That's like an eight and a half. Seven, like a one, oh, that's one why you wanted to play my Changeling deck against your super, Esper super friend. They're like, oh, I'll just humility him. Well, okay. yeah, it's great. Oh, you can God. use the Ur Dragon as much as you'd like. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's that's not happening. Well, well a quick question. So if you sit down, let's say at MagicCon, and someone is like, no stacks. Do you be, are you like I have humility? Should I take it out? Or you're like that's not stacks. That's humility. Like how do you navigate this? Or if there's like no control, is humility a control card? Like I I don't know. Like what what happens exactly? Because we never play with cards like humility. So I'm curious how your conversations go with humility. Mine? Yeah. I just straight up say I have humility. And that's every, the only what, what thing. What do people actually? What do most people say? They're like cool. That's fine. Yeah. Or they're, they're like, like well, I, 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 I pretty much the precursors. I tell them I am play like. I, this is my strongest deck. Do you yeah. want to play with your strongest non-CDH yeah. deck? Yeah. I just state it as that. And I'm like, there's humility and like all of that, but it is my strongest deck, and I'm very open about it. How many people just like do the Homer Simpson back through the bushes, like <laughs> walk away from you thing? I'm gonna be honest with you. The people that like me and uh, like the content or the decks I play are usually okay, and they know my shenanigans. It's yeah. not like this, oh, this is content creator uh, right. buff, right? Right. Yeah. The only people that come to Crim. To play with them are people that well, like, know. They, they, they know what's going, going on, on, right? They want to yeah. be humbled yeah. by yeah. humility, right? Yeah. And so, like, and like, I know exactly, I'm very open about it, and it's not like I'm like getting you or anything like that, but. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. Me. Like, I, I, as long as you disclaim that, but I think when it just comes to rule zero, I think there should be kind of reading between the lines and also kind of like a, a little bit of like, yes, maybe we don't play the 52 fast mana deck, right? Because that's not casual. Uh, but at the same time, like, just banning an archetype because you don't like it or banning just certain like a card because you don't like it like if i told you hey again scream at you for playing like a, a three visits what that seems silly right but like that's how it sounds when someone's like oh he's playing counter spells it's like oh you're playing a cultivate cringe right same deal to me so like i just don't understand like i think there's reason and i think that rule zero is now just becoming oh i don't like it so i don't want to play against it so are you offended if someone is like, oh, okay, I just don't want to play against you? Like, no. would that be, okay. No. Sounds like a compliment. Because what about, <laughs> yeah, like, that'd be, the, 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 <laughs> so what about the, the other Thank side you. of the argument that, like, we play a ton of games because we make content. What if you're playing one game a week and you don't want that one game a week to involve a card you don't like? Is it really wrong for that person to be, like, trying to sculpt their experience to, like, a fairly extreme level because they get one night out of the house a week to like play one game of commander with their buddies and they just don't want it they want to have a different experience than like trying to crack the puzzle or whatever they just want to have some brews and like joke with their buddies like i mean example like the commander that i play right i do maybe even get to play only like once every two maybe three weeks outside mm -hmm. of what we do right yeah same so like when i meet up with my friends we keep it within reason you know we're like hey what turn do you want to win by and other than that like you know it's like we don't want to make it so that it's also not fun for our friends who like want to play their cool, I don't know, uh, their their Urza deck or whatever. That's not t not CDH, right? Because at that point, I'd be like, we don't want to ruin their fun I either. I got no sympathy for the Urza player. I mean, I'm throwing an Urza out there, but <laughs> like, know. what about the egg egg, egg yeah. girl, the Naya egg girl, right? Like okay, that that yeah. one, like you know, the Atali or not Atali, Atla Palani, Atla Palani, Palani yeah. right? That spirals out of control real quick, oh, yeah. right? And it's just like, but just because I don't like that or some of us don't like that, it's like, yo, but our friend likes that, so let's let them play it, right? And we keep that in mind. I, I think it's reasonable that you can hate your archetypes or despise certain archetypes. That's totally cool. Is like, that rule zero working as intended, though? Like, like, even like a power level discussion, it's like, yo, I want to play this high-powered deck. It has humility in it. Can we, like, bring a deck that's high-powered that can match it? Like, that, that is rule zero to me. That's how I usually... Like when I go to conventions and I go to LGSs and stuff, um, the, the thing that is the rule zero conversation is like, first thing we say is like, what does everybody feel like playing? So everybody says like, I don't really want to try out this deck and then I'll try to match it based on that. That's like rule zero to me. Or people say like, I want to have a quick game, like hopefully like no stacks or anything because I need to go in like an hour and a half. So it's like, okay, I'm not going to bring out my Toshiro Umazawa deck because it's a slow deck and it tries to grind out the game. But that's that's rule zero, like but, just figuring out like how long do we want to play, what power level, like that's all rule zero to me, right? That's what it is, right? Like it should be a power level, but not like oh rule zero, but then the sub layer of rule zero, what cards are you playing, and then sub level on that, right? Like it's just yeah. like 
it, I think one of the best things that I do, like with like my other friends, like you know Joe Black Nito, I, I, like we just ask you, hey, what turn are you trying to win by? Cool, right? Like like there's some spice in here, but like nothing. A lot too of people crazy. don't know what turn. I mean, that's a hard yeah. one. The problem with Rule Zero is people don't know what they're talking about. Like they think their deck is like a five, but it's an eight, or they think it's an eight, but it's a four. Like there, there's no calibration to make sure you're all on the same page. But we rule zero, right? Commander Clash rule zeros. We, we have like these soft rules where it's like no stacks, right? Like yeah. don't endlessly loop Cyclonic Rift and things like that. So in that sense, I think it's fine. But like Krim said, there are people that do abuse it. If you look at the Moto rooms, right? It's like no control, no partners, yeah. no, you know, it's not like just no fast money. It's like very specific things, right? Like no three card combo, no mill outs. Like that may be a little too extreme, but we do rule zero. MTG's there special. are like titles of these motor rooms that look like yeah. Fallout Boy song yeah. titles. They're just like <laughs> 52 that. words. Yeah. At the same time, though, is even that bad? Like, what if it's 52 words? Like, they created the game. You don't have to join their game. Yeah. Like, yeah. is it really unfair for so them to list 52 cards if, they don't if like you're at and you Magic can just Con not play or it? Magic Online, it's not bad, right? Because you're like, I'll just go to the next game. Yeah. But if you are a small LGS with two pods that fire yeah. every week, yeah. and everyone has decided this, then like you either play or you go home. That makes yeah. sense. Right? So but like those are the you know, those are the kind uh, the times where wizards need to kind of step in and make uniform rules, right? Like But like how? Like and this is know. this is the one never ending loop of what commander it, like when it when it comes to commanders, like what is casual, right? Like so, but when you go to F and M for standard, you don't have these conversations, right? We're not like, right. oh, are you rule zeroing out shouldred or something? Like I mean, we don't have we just sit down and play. Right. Like, like is that how off. commander should be where you just no. Is it because like in 1v1 when you lose the game is over and you can move on with your life but if you get knocked out of the pod early in commander you're sitting there for the next like four hours or something like is that the difference between these formats why don't we rule zero like 60 card formats. Because I mean, you John, want to win. can you imagine we played modern? I'm like, hey, I just can you. I don't want to see solitude. Yeah. Can you cut that out of your deck and run? I think like the idea <laughs> of ca <laughs> like not casual, happen. the idea of a casual format where you're playing for an experience, not necessarily trying to win at all costs, is very, very unique to Commander. Like I'm sure there's other formats out there that do the same thing that are also very casual. I just don't know of them off the top of my head. But like the one v one formats, all of them are geared towards competitive gameplay. And so rule zero just isn't really a thing in those communities. Like modern, I don't see people being like, just for fun, you know, no. No one plays modern for fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, same thing with like, I had circuits, and it's like very, it, it's, it's founded upon competitive play, right? And commander is not. And I don't know, rule zero can be very frustrating, but I don't, I played so much commander with so many different people. Maybe it's because like, we're, we're like influencers and content creators that, people come to us and we have a great time, but like I've never really had an experience where people like rule zeroed in a way that I thought was like, oh, that's whack. I don't want to play with you. Everybody's, it's always very chill, you know? And sometimes people bring really powerful decks and that's the only time that it's kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. But then we play a game too and they adjust because everybody's being reasonable adults. I don't know. I, I've always seen Rule Zero as like a, a benefit. I've never heard these, like I, I hear horror stories. Have you ever seen like a horror story like when you go into a Rule Zero game and I, people are like, I don't want to play against counter spells. It's like no I, counter I spells and then they like, turn three combo you. Yeah, and you're no like, counter spells. <laughs> you're like, what? No board wipes. Like, like you hear that like on Reddit and stuff, but like I've never ever experienced that in real life. I, I my LGS I don't hear. has the, like the LGS I don't play in because of these weird because they, of rule zero no they have weird <laughs> house rules like the owner thinks that the black ley line ley line of the void, void uh -huh. that's so he you banned like it from his he, store yes if you, oh, you can't say it in the store <laughs> i guess she likes graveyard decks he oh, bans that's it garbage. Uh, the, uh, it's, the, this one is weird otherwise i have never seen it's more on modo the weird no counter spell ones really? the thing is as long as you don't play fast mana and pop off on turn two, I don't mind the, hey, I popped off. Like, if they play Itali and get value, sure. I don't like the stacks part, though. If you can't have fun, if their plan is you can't have fun, I can understand because I do but that fun myself. Is not have such a broad yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. word. Sure, right? sure, sure. Like <laughs> if you can't do what your deck is trying to do, and you can. Like, if, if they have humility and you have 
like Rexage doesn't work anymore. So if you don't have your naturalize or whatever, mm. your game plan doesn't work. If your game plan works, but theirs work better, everybody had fun because but everybody that's just had an a arms chance. Race, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun though. But yeah, I'm but just talking about myself. I like everybody can pop off. I might have play a counter or a board wipe, yeah. but I don't play. You can pop off as long as this permanent is on here, and this permanent doesn't do anything for me. That's why Elishnorn is kind of fine. Mm. But if this permanent just says you can't have fun, and I I just have this because I don't want you to have fun, I get this. I kind of get this. Like right, right off Winter Orb, all that stuff. Yeah, right, like, right off all of that. Not sure. fun. The, those cards are obviously you know the no goes right. Yeah. But then like at what point? Can you then say, like, the, the onus falls back on you that, like, hey, maybe I should have built it a little bit differently. Sure. Right? And I just feel like nowadays there, there is, if it ever, the finger was pointed back to me, well, it can't. It should never be. And it's like, that seems incorrect when oh, it comes yeah, to deck sure. build. It. Yeah. I mean, but, I play uh, counter spells. Isn't that, like, huh? Isn't that kind of the 60-card mindset, though? Like, this uh, solve the puzzle? Like, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, that's you're like, really saying it's too casual, right? Because what you're yeah. saying is get good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's essentially is. what we're saying. So we're saying, like, hey, you should listen to 20 hours of podcasts and learn how to work around X, Y, Z, which know, most uh, people don't want to invest in, I don't know if I agree right? with that. But, yeah. but, you don't, but you don't have to listen to 20 hours of podcasts to know that you But you have to get good, and it, it takes time <laughs> to get good, right? Well, okay, like, you could say get good, but, like, the po- like you know, it's like, hey... Maybe we don't fold to the Vandal Blast immediately, right? Like, well, that's that's like all I know is Mana Rocks, and I need Mana Rocks, and then I get blown away by Vandal Blast. Like, will you listen to podcasts to learn how to white ramp correctly? Like, you know, it's... I, I think if I get dunked on enough by a certain something, you know, regardless... Because like, that's not even like a, oh, that's sweaty, they're trying to win. No, that's just like, oh, hey, yeah. there's going to be wrenches in my plan all the time. Yeah. I don't like the idea of house ruling stuff that... House ruling, like, just blanket things that you don't like kind of is annoying like for for finding games and everything i don't think there's anything wrong with it necessarily for like if that's what if that's the game you're trying to play you're, you're trying to play solitaire games and fine find people who want to play solitaire games with you but definitely like having that mindset of like commander should be this way like trying to place place that as like the official way of, of doing things kind of strikes me a little bit wrong but we all we all have our own lines in the sand like some of us don't like playing against decks that are just like extra turns on deck. You know, if I showed up with a Narset and a Narset and Lion uh, Master, and I say my deck is in the Narset deck, if I attack with Narset, I'm going to take an extra turn, take an extra turn, I have, uh, and then that's that's my deck. And like, you know, a lot of people wouldn't like playing against that. The card is uh, but you gotta draw the line, right? Yeah, you so, gotta draw so the line. something like Narset Wheel, I think everyone is on board of, but what sure. about the person that dislikes getting counterspelled? Is yeah. that... Too casual? Should we be like, like... We're thinking of the extremes and not really talking about the middle. What right about Doomblade? That, that's like one of those, right? What, like what about Doom getting Blades. Doomblade? Like, I, I think we've Board accepted wipes. that you're getting Doombladed, right? But mm-hmm. a lot of people still dislike getting counterspelled. Is that... It's not fun, but... Is that yeah, okay? But why, why? How is that like... Like, I mean, it's like, it, yes, we did not let you win the game. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Well, you doesn't have to win the game. It could just be like, I, I play my Sun Titan and it got countered and I'm sad-faced now, right? Like... I mean, is that such a... Bad, like again, a wrench is going to happen. Right? I don't know, yeah. but but it's shown time and time again that people, especially newer people, more casual people, do not like getting their spells countered. Right? Like it's it leads to a bad gaming moment or something. Right? But I mean, are we so gaming we or are we playing that? solo players? I, I, are we trying to play like you yeah. know like single player story mode? Like I, I don't understand. Right? Like it is a multiplayer game. There's going to be four players. Yeah. Or is it a collaborative game? Oh, I mean, but even yeah. a, but even, well, is it a collaborative game this? or a competitive game? Yeah. Well, even and this is like without trying to win, right? Like, like I think people, the misconception is that also because, example, let's just say I play a counter spell or a vandal blast or anything that stops a certain archetype that is good against mine, that's playing sweaty. No, that's just having a contingency plan. And yeah. I guess my thing here is that doesn't mean that I'm trying to win or playing sweaty, but, right? And then on top of that. I do think that even a collaborative game, let's just go with like, uh, um, you're still, though you're playing collaboratively, you are still trying to do stuff to help get yourself farther ahead, maybe in points or something. Like there's games that are, numerous games that are collaborative, but there is a winner at the end, right? Okay. So there's tons of board games like that. 
has anyone actually complained about a singular counter spell? Like, yes. I don't no, for really. Sure. Yeah, so, definitely. So, I've never. Well, you never see the rule zero, but you do see the person that gets countered and like their demeanor, yeah, like changes immediately. They're not having a good time, and like their night is done. Like, really, I, I have seen those, oh, yeah. but I, I haven't know. seen the outright like no counter spells I think, at this table. I think some people like. I can be it can be frustrating if somebody's like counterspell dot deck. Like I had yeah, a Tower sure. deck, for example, and my Tower deck initially started as counterspell dot deck. <laughs> and people did not like playing against it. Like and then I, I, I tried I tried lowering it to like from fifteen counterspells to like ten and people still didn't like it. And then I was like, all right, people don't like it, I'm not gonna play it anymore. And like I can I I can get that. Like once once Tower had enough counter spells to counter anything that was relevant, people didn't like those games. And you know what? That's valid. But I, I've never seen personally anybody complain like I got counterspelled once in the entire game, and then I they ruined my nights, and then I cried at home. Like I have, I've never. Oh, I've I've definitely seen it. I've also Grimm's cast many more I, counterspells I, than you. <laughs> <laughs> he has a larger sample size. We all we all run. I don't know. But in our group, obviously, it's not salt inducing. Like, I we mean, all we, we play so much that it doesn't matter, right? It's yeah. really the point. The the person that plays like once. A month, once a week, once a Magicon. Oh like once counter. a year, they come to Magicon, right? And they're like, oh, let's play. And then they just get stacked into oblivion oh, every yeah. game. Yeah, like, but that's different that's, than that's, counter spell. Yeah, like, like I can understand, stacks, like, right? or sure. countered into oblivion. Countered and all their oblivion. spells countered. Like, yeah. things that I notice that get revealed a lot. A lot of people uh, don't like extra turn spells, yep. period. Yep. So, like, I see that as a rule zero. People were really like, just don't play extra turns. Krim, even, you don't like extra oh, turns. Yeah, I, I hate that. And so you don't even run in your own decks. I think that's a form of rule zero if we're like, all, all of us, let's not play with extra turns. That's rule zero. Um, combos, people don't like combos. And that kind of irks me a little bit because like, you I hear like. a lot of no goes. Yeah, no goes on. Even like seven combos hard all. combos. Like, no. I, I totally understand people <laughs> would say, like, I think people say that as a shorthand for like no two card combos that are easy to assemble. But like if I have like a five card yeah. combo that I can assemble like once every like 10, 20 games, uh, if you're if you're banning me off that, obviously that's like why do you like just relax? Do you uh, think people do mean that though? Like, I don't think, do think so. I think it's a shorthand. I, I, I 100% I think it's a shorthand. sympathize with them, and I I do. I don't see why you guys don't understand, right? Like. To beat combo decks, you yeah. need very specific answers, right? And in 1v1, like, it's a fair match because you know they're a combo deck, you're ready, and you're duking it out. Yeah. In Commander, like, three players are, like, doing some combat basing, they're doing something, and this, like, one person in the corner just ignores everything that's going on, combos off and wins. And they're like, what? Like, we're not even playing the same game here. Like, I didn't bring 50 counter spells in my deck, I can't stop but, you, right? But if it, so it that depends is, uh, on it. But it's like... It's like the difference between like I'm gonna kill you with a bunch of creatures and overrun, yeah. or I'm gonna kill you with a bunch of creatures and crater hoof. Like obviously the overrun is gonna be a lot harder to actually kill somebody. Same thing with combos. Like yeah. if I have a five card combo that's very hard to assemble, I don't have any tutors, and it takes like 15, 20 mana total to do it, and you have a lot of uh, chances to interact with it. I think that's a lot different than like a Thassa's Oracle demonic consultation. But people kind of lump them together in the same no infinites. Like, it's I mean, like, well, the 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 clash with Imidane is a perfect example, right? Yeah. Like people complain like Tomer was playing a board, he was trying to attack people lowering his total. Yeah, nobody. Richard did creatures. nothing literally the entire game, <laughs> and then untapped and won on that turn. And you're like, like, <laughs> what, what are we even doing, right? Like, who had a counter spell? Like, so I can see how that. that fine though. But but people do get upset about stuff like but that. But why? Because right? like alternative win cons exist in Magic. Yeah, and, and so I, think I think that's fine. Because it's like issue, you right? it's just came to play level. mini golf, and then the other person <laughs> played real golf or something, right? You chose like, to. If you think of it, break it down in mini golf. It's not that they're playing a different game. It's just like imagine mini golf. There's three routes you can take. Yeah. You choose route one. The others just took route three. It's not yeah. a different game. It's a different route. But I, uh, I think people want to build their commander decks though to like do a cool thing, not stop their opponents from doing a thing. But so I think that's like the heart of the yeah, problem. I like, do this. You could, we could stop Richard from comboing with M. Odane, but do we really want to build our decks in a way that's going to make sure we can do that every time? I, I don't think most people want to do well, that. The funny is, you, you, you mentioned it a while back. It's like you need to have the veggies, your ABCs in certain decks to do the cool thing, right? So if you want to do the cool thing, I think you still need to have your veggies, which is 
the interaction. Yeah. But, but I mean, what amount of interaction do you need to realistically, like, make sure you can stop the, like, two-card two combo like, player you, you start with a bunch of into CDH territory, where then it's like, I have to play so the... many but, but no, no, answers, that's a misconception. and then no. now my win con has to be very narrow, because I have so many answers that I have to win in, like, now, one or two cards. Now true. I have to combo you back, yeah. because, yeah. It's not true at Arms all. Arms race, right? Yeah. I mean, it's is it not more of an arms race if you sit there and play a game where I just you know goldfish my turn? Okay, pass. You goldfish your turn. No, we, I we mean, interact, we, but only for, with certain for a demographic <laughs> of gamers. Things. Only certain things are allowed to be interacted with. <laughs> for a demographic of gamers who like using magic's you know game rules where you can interact on other people's turns, they sure hate interaction. Yeah. Right? It's just like, well, why don't we just play solo player? But mode? some people just don't want to be sweaty, right? Some people don't want to. But that's not spend sweaty, Twenty right? minutes on a turn figuring out the right line of play and like answering the right thing. But right? there's there in line, we're now furthering another like this 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 like narrative that it's sweaty to interact. It's not yeah, I mean, sweaty. Right, right? Yeah. right now, what you just said right there does further that narrative. But interaction comes in like all the precons too. Like it's not yeah. sweaty in itself. I think I think rule zero often the complaints or. The imp imposition about rule zero is really a power level uh, discussion. Yes. Like, we don't want infinite combos. I don't think they mean infinite combos as in like five card combos that cost 50 mana. Mm -hmm. They say, I don't want infinite combos, but what they really mean is I don't want two card combos that are very easy to send build. That's a really power high powered win condition. Like, we just don't want a high powered finisher. We want, if you want to play combos, play it like more chill, like, like we have uh, more chill combat decks. Mm -hmm. So like for Richard, if Richard's combo combo was like just Imidane and then one other card, then yeah, that would be a little bit, it would feel kind of cheesy if you would like spend like five mana to cast Imidane, five mana to cast another thing and then you just automatically win. But no, it was Imidane, it was a targeted spell and then you have to have either Radiate or you have to have like this mana doubling uh, or damage doubling ability. It was That's at least three, three cards. Yeah, but he didn't even kill us with the three pieces. Like, he had to do a couple burn spells. I mean, I, I thought his finish was cool. Yeah, I thought it's like, but it's fine. It's if it was like a two card combo with one of them being his commander, then it, and it was like 10 mana total, then obviously I'd be like, okay, I was a little bit higher power than what we're bringing. <laughs> and that's the issue. It's not the issue is like, oh, all combo is bad. It's that Richard brought a finisher that's way more powerful than our other ones. Therefore, we say but no infinites. The level-headed, I think, like way to look at it is that, yes, not like every combo yeah. is going to be the same as Thoracle, yeah. but that's not how it is, right? Because I think it's a, if it is any kind of combo... I, I've never on seen average, anybody complain. I, I like I, command, like the not command fest, uh, the last Magic Con or in yeah. Philly, I sat next to people and I just heard their Rule Zero talk, and I'm like, that is like, you wow. read my biography, <laughs> and I'm gonna read yours, <laughs> and now we're gonna spend, uh, like, it, we're gonna. You didn't have to play with them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But they, I mean, but they, they sat down, and it's like, all right, all right. To keep the conversation moving, let's move on to the next scenario. Okay. Are you allowed, or should you kill someone? early okay so let's say the game's been going for like 20 minutes 30 minutes and you can just straight up murder someone and everyone else would get off like scot-free and mm -hmm. the game will continue for a while should you take out that person should you kill them because i know a lot of times we're like oh i feel bad and then you know if i kill this person they'll have to sit here for the next like two hours or whatever should you just be like here's the thing i hope you have an answer if not <laughs> you're, you're sitting here do you go for the kill? And I know we get a lot of flack because we uh, often do not go for the kill on Clash. Yeah. See, oh, there, there's an style. asterisk to my answer. I say, yes, it's fine. But the, the asterisk is that if this person got like stuck on lands the whole game, and hey, hasn't... that's the crim exception. No, no, because no, you're always on the side. No, no, no. But there's another backup to <laughs> my asterisk, and it's that also at the same time, if they were stuck on lands, but they're playing the Rakdos drop a hundred Eldrazi, yeah, please kill yeah. them first, right? Like, like don't right. be upset that people kill you before you get your engine set up. It's like, why can't I set up my engine? Because you're playing Rakdos and you're gonna drop a hundred Eldrazi. Like, by the time you start setting up, it's already too late, right? So, also don't be surprised when people kill you for that. But otherwise, I do think it's totally fine, right? Like, like. Why? Why not? I wish I knew the answer to this. Yeah. I really like. I I'm so torn on this one. Like. I want to say yes. I think Commander would probably be better if we were more comfortable with like killing each other and the game moving forward and ending. But every time it comes up, I feel so guilty about it that I oh, usually wow. don't do it. There's so many games where I it, it is correct for you, even to dumpster me. 
Like, like you know, like, but it, it is makes the other person feel bad. Even on Commander Clash, we've seen, like, if it feels like someone's trying to get taken out early in the game, it makes that person feel bad. It's and I want everyone to, like, have a good yeah. experience. I want the whole table to have fun. And if one person's coming away feeling like they didn't have fun because they got taken out early, so, like, does that diminish the whole game? We do this every game. So not the exact kill, but when you spread the love with an aggro deck, like, mm -hmm. you're not doing it's, it right. It's right? Incorrect, like, you are yeah. definitely, like, that you should depends. be honing in and killing someone with an aggro deck. You but shouldn't we be always, playing aggro if you're... <laughs> Spread but we always like spread the love to like it, it's kind of a lesser form of this no. than the outright like being kill. competitive. I think taking out one person is just like you need no. to start Strictly knocking better, down yeah. one person. I think it, I think there's a lot of nuance to that that question because I think a lot of times people take out people that there's no reason why he should be like okay it's yes an if there's opponent. If, if a person <laughs> because they're your opponent yeah, no <laughs> but you can you like opponents can often be in a multiplayer game resources you can use to take out your other opponents. So yeah. what I what I usually look at if I'm trying to, if I if I have an opportunity to kill somebody, first question is if I let this person live, am I probably just gonna lose to them if they get to like do their thing? If the answer is yes, I'm gonna take them out. If the answer is no, I'm fine keeping them around because let's say there's another arch enemy at the table. Maybe I can utilize their resources against that arch enemy and kill them later on. And then for for spreading the love. I think, like, for example, I have, like, a, an equipment aggro deck. I find it's more useful. Instead of just beelining on one person, I actually do spread the love because my late game is having, like, a couple dudes on the battlefield, and then I'll take an extra combat step and try to finish off everybody in one blow. I don't want to be yeah. arch enemy. I want to I soften everybody so they're all in kill range later on. And I think that's really good. And that's the reason why I don't like Voltron, for example. Voltron decks are the exception mm -hmm. where you don't want to spread the commander damage around. I mean, you could. You actually could. That is a valid strategy. But oftentimes, it's just better to take out one person and then move on to the next one. That's why I don't really play Voltron. But even then, like, you could just put, like, all right, 11 commander damage on you, 11 commander damage on you, and then you can decide, okay, who's the person that I need to take out next, you but know? Your answer is basically, no, you shouldn't kill someone, which is why yeah. you feel guilty playing Voltron. And yeah. I, you know Rograx, my favorite yes. commander, I don't play it anymore because of this exact problem, right? The correct thing is to suit up kill someone oh, yeah. and then the, the rest of the table will then answer Rogak and then we're all in yes. this like three player game right but so, like you can actually you can actually spread the commander damage and sometimes it is going to be right like if if the person you're going to take out again is not is not your main threat then you could just leave like 11 or so commander damage on them and start putting on the commander damage on another person who has great. Right. What, what you're talking about is just basic threat assessment. Yeah, right? that's like, different, like, right? If there's yeah. a reason to kill someone, obviously you kill, like if they're gonna win, obviously. But if right? you're just but like, like Voltron, you don't just be like, all right, I'm just sticking to my guns on this one person. Why not? Because what is if they're the not ahead? Not to kill? But okay, I think, so but I feel like, right? just say uh, Every deck is constructed to win the game in the yes. end. So if you let them win, and everybody says, oh, we can't kill them now, <laughs> they're going to pop off. We had this a lot yeah. of times. And even in pretty much every game, there's a situation where somebody could just be killed, and everybody said, but then there's a board where and they're going to sit there for an hour. That's why this question is incredibly complicated. <laughs> But yeah. I think it's correct to just kill somebody. It's just rude. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. so, is, 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 look, <laughs> is it not the live, biggest compliment that we always, re like even you admit it, right? Like when you're playing you your deck, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to win next turn. Y'all yeah. need to do something. Yeah, my decks are built to have like this sure. crazy turn. And if I get to this turn, it's over. And you should kill me before this. I know I shouldn't say this. <laughs> but I think it's also honestly, better is when it we're not the not most respect? Is it yeah, not the yes, most yes. respect to the player? Like, yo, it's we're a, we gotta get you out of here because you're too sick. <laughs> like, like you gotta go. Yeah. As someone who spent a lot of time dead on camera, I can tell you that I think it would be a lot easier for me if I didn't have to be on camera. <laughs> if it was like a regular pickup game, it's like, okay, I'm oh, dead. I can now. Yeah. I'm out of here. I can See now you, get yeah. a like, yeah. like even if I'm waiting for the group, I can at least like go get a sandwich, you know, get a refresher, you go do to an washroom. acapella beatboxing when you wait. <laughs> oh. Like, feel like it's like then we don't have to worry about copyrighted okay. music or anything. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, that's a special content creator situation. Yeah. I just think like sometimes, most of the time, I don't, I don't need to take out somebody. First I do, I do agree with Seth that I feel bad if I take yeah. somebody out early. Should we why? feel bad though? Why though? But why? I just why? feel bad why? because why? I, I never feel bad nothing. murdering someone in standard. Oh no, I, 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 I want to ruin their day in standard or modern. No, I, 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 I want to crush my If you do it in standard, the game is over, right? It's over for both of you. If you do it in multiplayer. I want to blood moon them and make them sit there. Yeah, I want them to feel it. And I don't feel even 
even a little bad That's about worse that. Than that. I got the I got the too much. But in okay. Commander, the game doesn't end when you take out one person. The game ends when the you win the game. Just play combo. I think that's the solution. That's, <laughs> oh, no. that's why combo decks are beautiful. Everybody yeah, has fun. And but then the comment section combo. complains about the combo. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about that. You combo, and then the game is over. And everybody had fun to uh, was in the game until the very last. Minutes or oh. twenty minutes where I combo. Remember when I when I did an extra said. turn combo? With, not extra uh, turns. The move not folk, extra turns. Oh, and I people remember. lost their minds. Although, ah, yeah, this was good times. I mean, if you re present an inf uh, it's uh, for the comment section, it's literally an hey, if it's combo. infinite combo presented in, in infinite turns, that's just an infinite combo. It's not an in extra turn combo. Uh, Time stretch into getting value is the problem <laughs> with extra turns. So infinite turns, it's fine. But extra turns. But what do you do? What do you do when it comes to commanders where you really have to take that person out? Like let's say those are the hardest yeah, like or feather yeah. or like or there's certain yeah. commanders where it's like if your commander Night lives cost. and you lives, <laughs> I know how this goes. You're yeah. just gonna yeah. go fish to a win. Yeah. I feel bad if I aggressively attack that person, try to take them out. But, but what other choice do you back have back. in that yeah. scenario? You have, why why would you even like Philbex is like kind of part of that sometimes, where it's like, like ten mana. I know if Phil yeah. gets to ten mana, yeah. he's gonna like cast everything and like do this yeah. huge thing and gonna beat us. But like, well, I don't want to kill him when he's at six mana because then Phil never does anything cool and it feels bad. Though. So <laughs> like, but why? Why that, do you that's feel a knowledge bad about that, that problem? Right? right? Like, like, remember when I played ad nauseum? You're like, we need to murder the ad nauseum player because we need to lower their life. You know, as as low as possible, so they can't ad nauseum, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew that, so I'm like, yeah, this is yeah. correct, right? Yeah. But there are other games where I was playing like Orvar, where I didn't understand the power of Orvar, and then you guys are just mercilessly beating him. We have an empty board. I'm like, guys, I don't even know what's going on, man. Because I'm like, dying to Orvar too many times. Yeah, right. Because like, I didn't know Orvar yeah. was that good. So like the feel bag is like that yeah. gap where you're like, I don't know how strong Feather actually is, right? That comes or I don't, a lot. I don't know. Like how strong, you know, just insert random new commander, yeah. right? Like we don't know the power level of it. Oh, I just yeah, built this yeah. deck. Yeah. The it other players know if you untap like, oh, you win, no. right? But, every, but the person's like, I don't know, guys. I have these cool Wilds of Eldrain cards I want to play. Yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. just getting destroyed left and right. So I think that's like a knowledge gap problem. I think that's rule zero. Like, like what you, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> be like at the beginning of the game, you'd be like. If they don't know that their their commander is really scary, be like, that's a scary commander. We're cool. You you playing it, but like we're probably going to arch enemy you. And then maybe that takes out the the feel bads because there's an expectation that yes, I'm going to be arch enemy and I'm going to have to cope with it. You know, like I'm going to have to fight my way for that first place because everybody else is going to be gunning for me. Or if they're feeling bad about being targeted, then maybe offer them one of your decks for the next game. You know, it'd be like if that's their only deck. Such a flex. <laughs> no, no. Here, play it. No, no, no. Play they have this is this more your skill. Play the Street Con. I'm going to play Super <laughs> Friends with Humility. If, if, like, if, if a person is having an issue with take, getting taken out every single game, maybe you should just say, like, look, we think you're the scariest threat because we're, we're aware of your deck. Uh, maybe you can swap it out for the next game, yeah. you know? And that yeah. can help cut out the field. But if they don't have another deck, then I said, I mean, then you can give them one of your decks or something like that, you know? Or offer to swap kind of decks, rude. and then you can crush them with, like, your feather or whatever and be like, see? Yeah, see, how do you like see? it? See, you should have attacked me. <laughs> okay, in a similar vein, is it okay to, like, utterly dismantle a player such that they can no longer play the game? So an example would be they've cast their commander four times already. Yeah. They're not a threat, okay? Like, they, they're not really a threat, but you can remove their commander and end them forever. Like, they are never going to make it to, like, thir you know, 16 man or something to recast their commander. Should you do it if you can? Or is that an equal level of feels bad as, like, removing someone out of the game? Their commander's now, let's just say, hypothetically been casted four times. They yeah. partied four times. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they did. Maybe they, they cast four the commander How much got bored wiped. Cast another like, commander got bored wiped again. Dude, this is my Aragorn, Aragorn game. Comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, right? like, I remember yeah. Seth had that oh, debate, right? <laughs> Seth was like, should I remove Aragorn like the third time and Tomer will never play another spell No, ever it was again. like seven. It got, it got worse. I caught, I, the last time I cast Aragorn, I was legitimately thinking not casting him again because like, no, no, this is what happened. So I casted Aragorn for like the seventh time. He was like 15 mana. There was no way I was going to recast him again. Yeah. And then Krim attacks me with his army. And if I don't block with Aragorn, <laughs> I tapped out to cast Aragorn. If I don't block with Aragorn, then I die. <laughs> or they put me at two. No, no, you went down to two. Lands. I, went to, I would yeah. go down to two. Yeah, I told I said, you I wouldn't play commander, though. I said, I said, should I just not block? And you guys were like, no, no, you should block. I said, but if I block, then I'm not playing the game. And they're like, well, if you're going to at two, then you're probably not going to play the game either. <laughs> so I ended up chump blocking. So like, 
Krim was ruthless. But, but it was I the chain of events that got you to the sixth cast of Aragorn, right? <laughs> but I think yeah. every yeah. single time. He didn't untap a single time. Yeah. I, I did not untap with him a single time. I had one, like, one, I, I cast Aragorn the first time and I had one uh, protection spell and then Seth, like, got through it anyway and killed it. And then every other turn I was like, tap out to cast Aragorn, it dies before I untap, and that was literally my game. But so is, is that, is that cool? on? Is that okay? I, I thought there was no reason for Krim to take him out. Have the last you played time, against Aragorn if they untap? Yeah, they, they, the value is absurd. That's why we did it at the yeah. time. Yeah, right? it's like Nick so designs. So if I, really, if, if, yes. if like I put my like, let's just say, I don't know, some busted uh, like commander out there, right? Yeah, was and he busted? Those, like, that the generates a silly him. amount of value. Well, let's just say Joda, right? Like five mana, oh, or five yeah. color Joda, right? He's like not Joda level. I mean, you get a lot of value, right? Like, and the point is that, yeah, like at that we'll point, we'll never know. Like, like that, <laughs> that, I mean, that was probably killed we'll never like know. one to four, right? It and made sure at, I wasn't playing the game, so I wasn't a threat yeah, to at you. Cast but. five. Tolver's no longer playing the game if you remove this. Right? I didn't play and the game. Is it right? I recast him. I think I cast one spell that was like I could ramp a bunch, and then Seth, in response, killed it. And that but, was but, it. but hold on, but that's like you, you gotta you're leaving out minor details. You were gonna like get ten lands. You were gonna get Seven. like ten lands or something. Yeah. It was yeah. a huge number. Yeah, but that was the only spell I cast. He died, and then the rest of the game was just recasting Aragorn. I never cast another spell. Okay, so so Tomer's stance is no, we shouldn't do that, right? No. I mean, I mean But why not? Isn't it the same vein as killing someone? Like if you can permanently remove this person from the game, yeah. should you? Because that theoretically increases your win rate. Should you? <laughs> Like, or should you like it? show mercy and keep them around? Did it? Let's <laughs> Did not it even say it? win rate. Like let's just say an example. Like if I'm playing against a red deck, they have a high chance of shattering all my artifacts. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So I just on probability, I probably shouldn't leave you around. Right. Sure. So like we see that with wrath a lot too. Yeah. Like who's yeah. the player that's most likely yeah, have yeah, the wrath? Right. Like, like I gotta try to take them out because they're yeah, most yeah. likely to wrath me. Yeah, yeah, being real, board, I yeah. know that I'm most likely the guy to have the wrath, and that's <laughs> yeah. why I'm never like surprised when the, the hands are thrown my way. So, so so we ha like dark. Should you dark steal mutation? The yeah. black player that or probably or has like player. one yes. way to get yeah. rid of this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you can just and let's say they're like an Imidane deck, right? Where they need their commander to win. Do you yes. dark steel mutation it? That's what it's And call it a day. Though, right? yeah. Or is that too cruel? Do nah. you leave them around and hope you can get around the combo or something? Dude, right? I've had my scarab god oublieted before. There was a way to like, like, and that was like not great for me. But it was fine, right? Like, it was, it's like I get it. So, so here's counterpoint: the tuck rule mm. and similar rules have been changed such that your commander cannot permanently be removed. Right? It used to be that if you ablation the commander, yeah. it shuffles into your library, yep. and your commander's done for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Now they change this so it goes back to the command zone, so you get a second chance at it, right? Mm -hmm. But there are loopholes, like Dark Steel Mutation, uh, the green one that turns into an elk, yeah. uh, Dranith Magistrate, I don't know. Like There are a bunch of ways you can disable commanders permanently still. Like Should wizards zip that up? Is it okay? Should yeah. we rule zero those out while we're waiting? Like, there would be what so many cards. That's so yeah. like, uh, is it though? Zero though, yeah. I mean, I think on some level, it goes back to what Krim said, where you gotta be prepared for that, right? Like, yeah. I'm not a big believer in the like, oh, you should play 20 counter spells to be prepared for every combo deck. Like, but at the same time, if you're dependent on your commander, having an idea of getting it out from under a Kenris transformation yeah. or something, like, that's probably your responsibility. Like, if you're leaving yourself dead to a Dark Steel mutation, that's something you probably can control, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. that would be... Like, I'm, there's like people play pull from tomorrow or Karn because like I'm trying to assemble Caldra and someone might exile it. So in some level, you do have to be prepared. I think. Yeah. All right. Like I mean, I'm, I, I want to build the Doctor Who deck that's like built the blue red one, mm -hmm. and it's got a lot of suspend things. I'm definitely preparing myself to catch a random Dronith Magistrate in the wild. So I'm preparing myself to answer that because suspend is a little hard to do if there's a Dronith Magistrate. Mm -hmm. I, I have a I have an artifact deck, Brutaclad, and I think every single time I played it, I've been anablasted. So I just like I make sure that I have mass uh, uh, reanimation, like. That's what, that's I we know what we're doing, spells. though. Should the like the average commander player be able to deal with this? Like that's the like obviously we play so much commander. Well, we we're, talk about commander so much. We think about so much commander. Is the alternative ban all mass wipes? Wait, we're bad. That's not. I mean, I mean, I mean, wizards came to the conclusion that tucking, shuffling is too much, right? And they changed that rule. Should no, we change? Our, you know, no, like. 
Oh, RC, sorry. Should we change it so that you can't dark steal mutation? I don't know how you would change the rules, but like you can't dark steal nah. mutation. Like yeah. maybe anytime you can blink your commander back to the command zone from under an aura or something like that, right? I think you that, have then to. You're you changing have to the game, for, right? Like you're yeah, actually yeah, just yeah, changing. But the... they did for ablation, right? Yeah. That, that's right. a very clear cut. But that's a little thing, right? that easier to like, like sense, kind of like. So. There were like know, three ways monitor. to shuffle into the library but or something. I think it's also like harder to. Stop because there's what do you, I guess you can play a bunch of tutors to find your commander again, but like dealing with enchantment on the battlefield is a little bit harder or oh, easier than like you're finding back. a thing in a deck. <laughs> I mean, they've got two now, and yeah, yeah. Red. they got three now. There's a five color. I like man. I like the change personally. I bet I think like if your deck is entirely revolved around your commander, it just makes good sense to have as many ways as possible to protect it. Like, that's just a general rule. Obviously, if the entire table is just viewing you as arch enemy and they just dumpster you, like, that's, you can't do it. But, like, if, if there's just, like, a single camera transformations on your commander and now your commander, your deck literally cannot deal with it, then that's probably that a might be a you thing. thing. Yeah. So, that's, that's, so you then think it is not correct for you to dumpster a person and like like Richard mentioned, right? So you you, you do yeah. They're saying they they should be they they are responsible for answering this, and if they can't answer it, it's their fault. It's yeah, not really but the question. no, right? There's certain levels. It's, it's what, like, what are the levels? Okay, though? okay. Let's say there's a difference between dealing with like a single dark steel mutation and then every single opponent just every single turn dark steel mutation at you, right? Like there's there's certain levels of like okay, right, well, come on right. guys, let's let's relax a little bit. <laughs> but that's not the so that's back to rule zero. I think the real question is, remember when we played with Andrew and I played a, I played and copied uh, acidic slime, and at some point the only reasonable target was his bounce lands. Yeah. <laughs> and then you say, well, that is the situation where you say, well, I, I can kind of just really mess you up, and it's kind of optional dealing with the crazy commander, and you know they can, can't deal mm -hmm. with the dark steam mutation. That is good removal. But saying, well, yeah, I just vents a bounce your bounce land. I think he crushed us did that you, game too, right? Did you blow it up? I, I, I did ahead. blow it up. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. also like <laughs> super ahead. Was that the game where he just yeah, mercilessly beat playing, me to a pulp? He was playing like the editor deck, the, most the Boros deck, deck, and he, was, he just destroyed us with it. So I yeah. think blowing up one of his lands was fine. It was fine, but... And that was the situation where it's just like, like, oh, I can just really throw yeah. a wrench in there. Sometimes like, it's funny. It's like, funny. I think it's fine. Like, you, if that were me, if I were Andrew, that. hell yeah. Do it. My, my favorite dumpster story is there was one game that I, one thing I was playing just to play test. We were doing like $1, like budget, we were doing a budget week and I was practicing Jaw Real, which is like a Simic a reanimator. Oh. And oh, I had yeah. a, I had a card, I think it was like Sylvan, Sylvan Reclamation or something. It turns all my creatures into two two uh, creatures of indestructible reach, uh, haste, oh, all that stuff, lands. and it allows you to attack. But it's until your next turn, all your lands into into two two creatures of indestructible until your next turn. And uh, I was playing against Neotic online. We were just like a Discord group, and he played Massacre Worm. <laughs> <laughs> Did it at least kill oh, wait, you? Oh, not Massacre Worm. So, it's uh, Archfiend of Despair. Oh, all, that's all, bad. all creatures that's get bad. negative two, negative two until the turn. He gets a bunch of energy for each creature that dies. I was out of the game, but it was hilarious. Like sometimes it's just funny to dumpster. Well, but that's because you're a content creator. I mean, like, you walked into moment. this. What well, it, it wasn't a show. It wasn't for uh, a show. It was uh, just we were all on Discord. I mean, if you turn like, your lands into friends, creatures, that you're is, asking that for is it. Why yeah, you like, you were really it was funny. asking for it. It was funny. <laughs> How much of this do you think is the ban list being too casual? That's the other thing I was wondering. Because we know the ban list is not based on power level. Every other format, the power, the ban list is based on like. If something is overpowered, we ban it to try to control this. Like, do you think that's part of the issue? Is we're trying to have like a casual version of a ban list where we're like, I don't even know, sending signals and just banning things based on what's unfun rather than like what is actually too powerful. I the problem is like yeah, if we like I do think that we should be banning on power level if we're that worried, especially for a casual format. But then there's like. Commander splits into two formats, right? There's CDH, there's regular. Then there's also like, that's a lot of cards to sit down and then play test. There are a lot of cards. Like they, yeah. they don't even have enough people to like, like play test that's their like digital the, cards, that's right? That's the like, arena rebalancing yeah, yeah. excuse, the paper version. You, know, the, yeah. you mean the Sharpie. Well, that's <laughs> you Sharpie thing. over. I don't know. I feel like it is a casual format. So banning, banning for casual is fine, not parallel. I feel like Rule Zero does such, such, such heavy lifting yeah. that like, 
like for example, X returns. We don't like I, like I said before. A lot of us don't like X returns, and we prefer not playing decks with X returns. And does that mean we need to ban X return spells? No. I, we've already settled it with our group. But why, why not? But would it be better if they just banned them and yeah. we didn't have to have some like back like, and forth, like, how do you grade your deck conversation? Like, would it just be better if Wizards well, took the. It, the it creates onus an in group it? who knows all of the inside rules and then an out group that doesn't know the rules. Like, imagine you just picked up magic and you're like, oh, extra turns. That's amazing. I build an extra turns deck. You go to your LGS, everyone gives you the stink eye the whole night and like beats yeah. you, right? Like, the ban list is supposed to avoid this, right? Like, you don't want these, like, secret rules that no one is supposed to break. It's like baseball. You know how, like, if you beam the pitcher or something, they got to, like, beam the net. <laughs> like, there's, like, this, like, complex system. And if you do it wrong, everyone's, like, really upset, right? But the like, format's so big. Like, you'd have to ban, like, 50-plus cards, right? Like, yeah. and then you, just just, you just ban extra turns. Like, extra turns I mean, is an every, unfun mechanic. We ban it outright. So every single card, like what about like the red extra turn spells that it, if uh, after you, you take your extra game, you lose the game. Are we banning that too? Is that the same level? That, that's as up a, for the RC to decide. I know, but like <laughs> right? there's so I much nuance to these or, questions. Or what about land so destruct? Like mass, like Armageddon effects. That's another one where I see new players send me deck lists and they'll yeah. have Armageddons in them. Yeah. Because they don't know it's taboo and it's actually like banned, but it's not actually banned because we uh, don't know why. why it's not Where's actually your banned, but well. like... But that's another one where you can see people like, oh, I'm going to get into this new format commander. I'm going to build this deck. Oh, this card is legal. I'm coming from a format where I want to play the the strongest legal cards possible because I play modern or standard. And they put Armageddon in their deck. And then their first experience is going to be very negative at their local game store because they're going to Armageddon. And everyone's going to be like, boo, you can't do that. That card's not allowed. Like, you're a horrible person. It's so funny that Armageddon has never been an issue at our tables. Yeah. Like... Richard uses it to close out I mean, games, and it's like, all right, you close out the game. But that's because we're responsibly Armageddon, yeah. right? Like, I, I, yeah. the difference you, is that all five of us... If you fire off for the lulls, then it's annoying. Well, because the five of us know what we're doing, once a right? season. If I brought it every week, you guys would get... Oh, it would <laughs> you be know, so it, it would be... That would be like a power level issue, Actually, though, right? is it? What if I had the most terrible Kithkin deck and I slapped an Armageddon in there just for yeah. you guys? I don't know if I'd feel that bad, considering that as long as you... Because, like, I trust you to use Armageddon to where it's not, like... Because I'm a responsible gamer, but not right. everyone's yeah. responsible. Right, right. right. That's like, <laughs> that is like with great power comes great responsibility, yeah. right? So, okay, like, so, but like, it's so it's such a slippery slope. Okay, so we ban all the extra turns because we, as a group, do not like extra turns, and then we ban Armageddon's because we we believe the casual people in general don't like any mass land destruction. So that okay, so now we're adding 50 cards to the ban list, and then we have to figure out like which ones are okay. Like, is Fall of the Thran okay? It <laughs> destroys all the. All the lands, but it's like seven mana and it returns it six. slowly. Six mana, it's like garbage, right? Are we going to burn, ban that anyway? I like, mean, it's so. Every other so format has ban lists that someone maintains and they it's have so lots many. of cards and, like, I don't know. it works. It's the so the many larger cards. the format, the more cards you need to ban. It's so many cards. I just think, like, the whole idea of, like, oh, like, you shouldn't play Armageddon, but we won't ban Armageddon yeah. is just, like, very weird if yeah. you don't know Commander and, like, if you're new to the format, you're coming from 60 card formats. It's a very different philosophy than any other format. Honestly, but rule zero is just like something that you don't deal with any other format. Like yeah. the yeah. commander is so different from any other format, That's you true. have to approach it differently. Like, it's so simple when you do yeah. anything else, right? Because commander yes. is the biggest like guessing game and like throwing darts, and then you had to count for three others, yeah. and like it's just like, yo, can we play magic? And just like simply put it that hey. Like, yeah. look, I'm gonna be real with you. You won in that, like, with, with the, the million turns Moonfolk deck, right? Mm -hmm. Even though I don't like extra turns, I thought it was funny. Like, I mean, like, you hated it. I hate it. I hate the deck. You hated it. I think the deck is awful. You were so mad at me. Oh, yeah, the deck is awful. <laughs> the deck is awful. <laughs> but also, cool, dude. Like, 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 yeah, like, it, 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 cool, dude. But also, cool, dude. Happens. Get it. Right? Like, that's cool, man. Oh. <laughs> Do your thing. Okay. But uh, there's also, it's also politics. Like, a lot of. I, I've had friends that I tried to get them to play Commander, and they're like, I don't like politics, so why would I play it? But it's intrinsic to a, a multiplayer format. You have to talk about what the threat assessment is and trying to utilize other people's uh, resources against them and misdirection, all these things that are just not a thing in 1v1. And it's just like this format is so different that we have to have a weird-ass... Uh, ban list. We have to have rule zero conversation, all that, politics and all that that you just don't deal with in one v one. That's why, like, it, it's I, I don't know. It's weird to apply one v one philosophies onto this multiplayer thing when so much of it is so different. I okay. This is I like rather than like you know 
harp on it all, like this one topic. I'm curious like, if I asked one spicy question then. Yeah. Right, what's the spicy Go question? One spice. So because of rule zero and everything that Commander has become and it is now the face of magic, yeah. do you think that casual you know, magic and all of that and rule zeroing has kind of messed with magic? <laughs> What does that even mean? Like, has, is the <laughs> game is commander is, now? Right? Is the is the theory behind deck building wrong? Like, like just like everything, throw it out the window that we've known. Is is like the idea behind magic gone? Like, like the original ideas of how magic is to be played when it comes to deck building, is all of that moot now? Because does that matter anymore? Like, should should we even care about that stuff? Like all the like the ABCs of deck building, throw it out the window because someone might not like it. I, I think so. So I think Magic used to be a competitive game. So like a 1v1, I sit down and I play. It has now become a social game in which the goal is to have fun. So an example would be, I don't know, you're a pro Mario Kart player or something. Like online, you're just like slaying people. You're just like busting out all the moves. Yeah. But when your friends come over to have a fun game of Mario Kart, like you don't do the same things to them or you tell you them I'm on, actually like, a pro Mario Kart player we got to play Fortnite or something instead yeah. right like or you, you turn on all the items them. and then like let them just like go wild with it like do so, yeah. so much catch up abilities like blue shells for everybody who's not in first place nah, this doesn't just, matter. Y'all, y'all have some real nice friends if that's the case it's more of a like we have to hang out for four hours yeah i can't just like pile drive you to the ground and like, we leave i like, run I mean, into this yeah, like i literally play against my friends and some of them may actually be pro fighting game gamers yeah, and they, they, they do not let me off easy <laughs> <laughs> i had to do this in i run into this a lot with smash bros yeah um it's tough because the skill gap is just yeah. like my like, girlfriend doesn't at all want to play with me. <laughs> she doesn't well, even play other games. Yeah, yeah we have to play know. other games. Well, it's just not. This is why tough. I often reference. But in board Commander, games. you can just do like, something. Catan, Catan, right? You yeah. can play Catan. That's that's socializing. You're having fun. You're managing resources, I right? Play Catan. And then, but like at the same time, it's funny. I cut my friend off longest road. Or he takes biggest army from me for no reason other than that, right? It's a part of board games, and is Magic then not a board game? Or like Commander. It's but like what, if, be, so what if Magic's like D&D? Like D &D? What, if, what if that's what Commander is? The, Commander then would have to be battling a deck, right? It would be four players battling a deck, some PvE element, not each other. But isn't D&D &D you just wander around and like y'all have fun together and like things kind of happen? Isn't <laughs> yeah. that kind of what Commander is? More like, because it's a collector's game where everybody wants to show off their shiny cards. Oh yeah. That they spent way too much money that's on. That's a swap <laughs> meet. That's not, that's not <laughs> playing a, a game. Meet. I mean, isn't that what Commander is <laughs> that's really? It's like, yeah, that's the secret layer that I got. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe that's, that's Don't the interrupt thing. me until I get to 10 minutes so I can show you off my like ultra foil. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My halo foil. My halo foil. I mean, is it that the epitome of casual gaming? Like, you just get together with some friends, and you're like, how's your day? And you're just loosely playing this game in the background, and you're not really paying any attention? That is what Commander is to me, honestly, Yeah, now, you're just chatting, are, like, and then someone's like, Armageddon, you're like, what? I gotta, like, think that. Like, what are you yeah. doing? I'm trying to ask you how your day went, Krim. I'm trying to ask you... You can't that, do both. That literally is <laughs> I, I do both all the time. It's like... People bring like so many like cards that I don't recognize anymore. Yeah. It's like your universes within and universes without versions, and like everything's a secret lair, and I can't read your Tevish Svat because it's like this metal poster. I have no idea what it is. So you just say like what the stuff is on your board. I'm like, okay, cool, great. I, and then if they say I'm dead, I'll be like, okay. That's sure. my favorite thing I to ask. Sure. I don't. Am I dead? Am I dead? <laughs> like, like, I don't, I don't know. know. That all the time on Clash. Like, did like, you win? Are, are we dead? <laughs> like, if we were doing 1v1, super sweaty, then I'd be like, okay, light total cards in hand. What does this do? Let me read it. Blah, right. blah, blah. But it's a commander. It's like, I don't know what the, your stuff is on your board. Like, I just yeah. don't. It's like, it is casual. But, but no, no, no. But here's the thing. See, yeah. because of that, it, yes, it is casual, right? I fully agree. But just because it's casual doesn't mean you can't like want it like efficiently do something. Yeah, right? like I, I think that's the problem here. Like we're kind of like pushing what is this the continued narrative of what seems to be a lot of EDH is that oh well if you're trying to do literally anything efficient that's not casual. It's like that's not true. I I'd give you one tip. Don't do this in Commander. Don't do the yeah do whatever. I look at my phone. 
it's, it is, I hate it. Like, my decks are usually like, well, oh, like I'm going to take a long D&D. turn. You don't want to be it's on your phone. <laughs> You're just being rude. Just I know it's rude. like, yeah. Uh, yeah, but also just say, yeah, do whatever. Am I dead yet? I hate to say it, but I, I try to always ask, what does this do if I don't know it? I try to follow the game. It's How long is your turn? Turns though? are my long turns enough, are long. Dude. I, I, I mean, my turns, turns are all long. long in some of yeah, those turns. I do more people are like turning off on just your turn. <laughs> yeah. It might be because you're taking like ten I, minutes. I, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Right. It happens to me, but I, I. I don't play a lot. I like when I play Paper Commander. I really, yeah. really enjoy it and yeah. try to be there because I only do it only once yeah. in a couple of weeks. Maybe it would be different if we met every week. I just don't do it. Just keep keep. It's one one evening. They might have more fun than you. For I could be a good rule right? zero question. Or rule zero <laughs> discussion, be like, even no though I'm more taking rule a, zero. We're if I take a ten minute yeah. turn, I don't want you sh- pulling out your phone. Can I rule zero oh. by waiting and we just all get pizza? Yeah. <laughs> Seth, so, you mentioned D and D. That's a very like uh, like that's what we'd like it to be, right? But in order for like us to get that D and D experience, where all four of us are just playing and having a jolly old good time, mm-hmm. we need there to not be a co- there needs to be a common enemy, right? So there needs to be like a deck. It'd have to be like a deck building game, like a river. That's right? grim. Uh, I, I can be the river. Look, I will fall on that sword for y'all if I need to be. That's cool. I love playing Arch Enemy. But I do think that there needs to be something like that because otherwise it just can't happen in Magic. Like, the game is just not built that way. It wasn't the Arch Enemy or whatever. But like, so, so, yeah, exactly. So then if we wanted to change it, then that means the ABCs and everything that we know about Magic, throw it all away. I think that's where we're at, though. Like, I think in Commander, the ABCs of, like, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 1v1 formats, I don't think they apply anymore. I think it is actually just like different now. I don't know if it's better. It might not be How's better How's that negatively affected 1v1 though? Like in Modern, for example, isn't it like the top deck like... Okay, we need to stop Botsies. referencing Modern because Modern Botsies is not a... do like eight times and stuff and that's normally no, like... No, 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 no. Legacy that's... is like everybody's fighting over a single land because everything else is being wastelanded aggressively. Like, yeah. But that's the norm. Like, that's, that's the norm, right? But it's yeah. very different in Commander, right? Which is why we're having this conversation, yeah. right? Like, well, how did we go start These from are, there and then arrive and, uh, yeah. like, yeah. Don't kill someone. You shouldn't kill someone. Like, that's a huge journey yeah. that we yeah. had on yeah, as sure. a community. But it's yeah. mul- it's, it, Commander has always been this, like, weird, casual format that's multiplayer and you politics. Keep casual, but I think like the that's difference the is it's like it is, it is because format modern is competitive. Legacy well, yeah, is competitive. But modern's also miserable. competitive. <laughs> and on top of that. Limited is competitive. It's one V one and the only objective is to murder your opponent. I but think do, but can you uh, I don't think those are separate things. Like you can't like I don't think that you could just make it so that magic like casual and like just like having a plan doesn't d- makes it not casual. So I think so you can have them both I think Seth can sum up Krim's argument with like against the odds, right? So against the odds is like you're playing some like terrible jank and you know it sucks, yep. right? Yeah. But you're playing it against tier one decks that will interact with you and will mercilessly beat you. Yeah. But like you accept it and you like metagame around it and you choose not to play a tier one deck, you choose to play some jank to have fun. Yeah. So I think what Krim is asking is like, should you take that mentality into Commander? You play some like terrible jank and understand that people will be ruthless against you and there will be much stronger cards and much stronger politics or something and just accept it? Or should we be like, no, you need to play jank too. I play jank. We both play jank. Well, is Here it, we go, right? Is it like, I would give you the question, if, if somebody showed up at a CDH po- at, a, at, a, at a table and just brought a CDH deck to the convention and you yeah. were like, everybody brought out their, car, their decks and I just dropped down my CDH niv um, And then I, I wiped the floor off everybody. That's not, Would that's you? Like not, but isn't that that's taking? That'd be the, more the, like if I took my I standard deck and then you showed me your vintage deck. But that's the same form. It's the same. It's not format. the same format. That's different formats. Yeah, but I'm playing commander you're, and you're playing commander. Nah, CDH is not the I've same. I've just decided. Like, CDH is where do you draw the line, no, right? Like, CDH is not the oh, like off the rails. Not this <laughs> no, but that's that's the thing, right? Like you have to have you have to have the rules here. You have to talk about like yes, we should meet at like eat, meet at the middle on things like seven? that. Seven, seven is the middle. Seven, seven, seven. 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 Like, CDH is all fourteen. So nine times out of ten, if I said if I if I brought my t- if I brought my CDH and a Mizzet deck at a table, just like a random ass table. People would say I'm pub stomping, right? Okay, okay. we're not doing the CDH discussion. I I do have a good point for you. So the most casual thing that I've ever seen, and it happens everywhere, and it happens on Commander Clash, is altering the mulligan rule, (laughs) right? So many playgroups, I think most playgroups, most content creators, 
do something beyond the standard mulligan rule. For example, you may keep mulliganing seven card hands until you have a respectable one. You may draw like 14, put back seven, and shuffle or something. We may restart the game like eight times. Restart the game. Well, because we can't do those things line. on Magic Online. We, we might possibly restart the game many times if you mull more than once, right? Yeah. But there is a real world of like, get good, build a better deck and mana base such that you don't mull. And when you do mull to five, deal with it. Right, like build your deck to be able to catch up, or you know, whatever. Right, like, what do you think there? Should we uh, alter just the official mulligan rule? Should we allow people to do whatever they want to mulligan into a respectable hand, or should we just be like actually follow the deck building checklist and like build I mean, a real mana base, play more land, so you don't have to mul you know abuse the mulligan system? Should we you know kind of push that narrative? I think I'm too casual for competitive and apparently too competitive for casual. <laughs> I think you no, should. That's, that's part I think, of the problem, right? I think you should totally just have as many mulligans as yeah. you want, right? Because yeah. I want you to play the game. And yeah. I think there's a bit of trust in me that, like, trusts you, right? That's like, okay, well, you're not going to mulligan to Soul Ring combo, right? Yeah. So I think that we can, like, I think even the basic noob person, new person can also, like, read the room there. Right, like and understand that hey, maybe we. Can... I don't Sometimes know. I don't know. That would be my people. risk. <laughs> like if you're playing with ah, you should probably build a better deck. You probably should have mulliganed a little bit better. You know, like. I mean, it, like again, like also at Magic Cons, I don't assume that everybody does that. And I've done the games where it's like no free mulligans, just basic rules, right? Like, no, I, I mean, get the one. And I then... do that. I was just like. But I, I mean, I've done both, and I'm fine I with usually, all. Of them. I, even at a pre-release, I'm not gonna play against somebody that mulls to four, which yeah. sounds weird. Yeah. But it usually doesn't oh, that's happen. A event. The worst because they, do. they play enough lands. Yeah. Usually, if you yeah. do the oh, I have to mulligan to four now or five is usually where they where they say hey hey in commander. But first, I ask how many lands they're playing. <laughs> well, are you gonna punish them for not knowing and how to build a mana base? You're like mana. twenty. Yeah. yeah, if they they're like, sir, you just put four lands in your hand and draw three off. If the they deck, if they <laughs> if they have like thirty two <laughs> lands, oh, but I play. Crypt and stuff, I say, whew, too bad. Yeah, good luck. Like, <laughs> because, oh, no. I don't do that, but I do give a snide remark after. Yeah, I, I might, I might give like, them weird looks. If you're like at 32 and like five of them are in DFCs, I'm like, all right, cool. That's still 37 lanes. No, no, 32 and five of those 32 lanes oh, are in oh. DFCs. Oh, no, no, no. Then no, no, like, okay, okay, come on. Yeah, I mean, but I, I'll let them do it. Yeah, pro I would probably let them do it, like, but whatever. I would let them know. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd be like, hey, maybe get know, as, we let them do it, but we give them very passive yeah. aggressive. Yeah. That's, that's how they yeah, do this. A little bit of you know? I don't even give them any passive stuff. I just tell them to play the game, and that's what I want them to do. Yeah. So, well, within reason. I'm not like in the yeah. later. Yeah. Rule zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, forgiving mulligans are a positive, right? right yeah, Overall, that's a positive. Like, I would say that's a positive for the format. But yeah. then if you go too far, people definitely could abuse it. So yeah. People don't but do that in 1v1, but that's how right? all like, commanders different, one. right? Oh, in 1v1, yeah. In 1v1, you're, you're like, oh, yeah, go oh. down to 4, go oh. down to 4, yeah. yeah. I actively <laughs> yeah. want your mulligan to 0, right? Like, in, in, in 1v1. <laughs> yeah, not in pre-release, though. Yeah, pre but that's, oh, why, yeah, sure. that's why the format is fundamentally different. We, it, I keep saying the word casual, and I know that stings, but, like, in in one v one, if we're playing if we're playing a one v one format, what you're gonna be like all oh, mulligan until you have a good seven? It's no, like no, no, no that, that's obviously just, not. That just sucks to suck. Yeah, right? like, but like, like, like that's why commander is different, and that's why I keep calling it casual, and that's why rule zero is important. The ban list is different, and all that stuff, and like we have to talk about like things we don't like, you know, it's like. But I agree with you that yeah. rule zero is good, but now rule zero has evolved into this yeah. other thing. Right, and and I think that now it's moved so far past just that. Is it that though? Like, I feel me. like nobody actually does this. Like, do you think there's a play group? That no counter has spells. No counters, and yes. they don't. Don't you just? No rag you know, it's like, oh, you just combo off. Unless they say also no combos, also yeah. no crater. I would just not play with that group. I feel like that yeah. group would just I be feel a like, red. That would be a so red flag. Like, I'd be like, all right, now I just I just avoid that, and that probably was. But do you like think that those it's self-correcting people... though? Like at some point they will know. Oh, this this. Aggro overrun deck always wins now because we do no counters, no board wipes. So the solution for this is counters and board wipes. So go wide and party. Right? Yeah, well, the way but, but then that's that's the question, right? Like, so then do you, well, I well, actually propaganda think, might be the fix. <laughs> Just I am curious pay. if you think the people that do those long laundry lists of no's, do you think that they are self-aware? Like that also that that yeah, is not. I feel normal? like you learn as, as long as you do this a couple of times. 
maybe they just always want this because they never get it because nobody actually does the no counter spell thing and they always think oh if they wouldn't have it it would be so cool that's why i say it every time because i think if you do like a couple of games where nobody can interact it seems like you just learn from it like i i don't like interacting much but even i play board wipes but it's decree of pain so i draw cards and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but still i mean what? i even play farewell in pain. but i mean okay so do you think though the people that have those like laundry lists of things though like do you think that they know that that is not normal like or like not like you shouldn't expect that like if you have 52 things on this list of yeah. no's do you think they should expect that of a random pickup game? Like, you, like no. and then if they, and if, like, I think there are reasonable no's, right? And then there's an unreasonable. Oh, yeah. But who draws the line there? Like, and, that, and that's, that's, the, that's the issue. Right? What's reasonable to you might not be to me or vice versa. And, like, then you run into that whole, like, you know, it's even more rule, rule zero. Ban list or, like, or, yeah, right? more rule zero. Yeah. Maybe. So I feel like at that point, then you spend more time talking about the game than actually playing Honestly, the that's the, the my most annoying rule zero experiences are the ones where you spend 10 minutes going through rule zero. Yeah. I want it over in, like, 10 seconds. Like, yeah. uh, everyone's a seven. I don't care. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty much how I play it. And then Cool. <laughs> and then if something, if the game didn't go nicely, then you see the person who like stomped or whatever is like, okay, I'll switch next for the next one. It's like, fine. I don't know, like, do you guys have bad Rule Zero experiences? Really? Yes, I, I feel They're personally, the worst. because so we play so much magic, we can navigate it, right? Like, even if we get pub stomped, like, we don't care, yeah. right? And we know how to stop the pub stomper. Yeah. So I feel we're in a different position <laughs> because... And, and also, when we play with people, people might know us. Like they might Magic know Con. us, yeah. yeah. So it might be a, a bias. And like, if you come to a Magic Con, you're pretty enfranchised, and you're probably like pretty up to date on the rules and everything. Yeah. And you know not to Armageddon. Like, can you imagine someone just brings an Armageddon deck, it would kind like of a stacked fun. Armageddon deck, to Magic Con, and that's all they did, and they just played that all weekend? Can you imagine yes. the experience this person would have? Like, oh, it yes. would be so bad. That was my first experience at Commander, like 2011. My first play group. There was one person was playing. He loved mono red, and he would always play just the weirdest mono red decks possible. It was bad. It was a bad deck because also mono red was bad back then too. And he would just like have random MLD. He'd have Joko Hoth, but he played not to like win the game. He'd just like oh. play it. And also chaos cards. He loved yeah. chaos cards <laughs> oh. and scramble wow. verses and whatever. It was like so. so the wow. rules are to protect. Not only the other people, but this person, right? Because this person, this could be their first Magic Con. Yeah. Like, it's funny that we wow, Magic it, players exactly. are like total jerks. Like Everyone beat was up rolling their eyes lot, at me yeah. the whole week, and I do not want to be part of this community, right? So it's to protect them as well as us, right? So that's why I don't like the Rule Zero whatever. They're like, what if you don't know? Yeah. Like, what if you don't know all the special rules, right? So we should just lay it out there, right? Like, do not play Armageddon. Ban it. <laughs> and then it's straightforward, right? You don't have to guess. You don't need to know this inside information. Would you be in, so would you be in favor, instead of this... Um, in this ban list, instead of just like having you know X amount of cards, if we raise it to like 200 cards, would that be acceptable? And we get rid of all the extra turns, all the, everything, and the community would like vote on it. No. You know, everything on the salt scale, we just ban it. Dude, we, we, that be be every card would be banned. We yeah, as a community yeah. can't so decide like, on like whether or not. Yeah, so how, do we, how, do we how do we even do that? How do we ban? Can't everything? do that. Like Cyclonic Rift, this salt is salty according to the DHX, so do we ban it? I mean, we don't have the answers. The RC and Wizards have the answers. Yeah. Yeah. But the but RC they're guys get out of their own. a game and a play experience, right? Like in the same way other game developers put rules in and they balance cards and they add new rules and whatever, like they're curating experience. So Wizards should do it too. Or Does that make it more inviting writing? for new players though? If I was a new player and I saw a format that had like 300 cards. Is but 50 like, cards aren't those cards different? actually banned though? Like that's the thing, like aren't, isn't Armageddon actually banned? Like that person can't go to Command Fest and build an Armageddon. But if it's a high powered out. table, then yes you can. Yeah, and CDH. But we're not talking about high power. No, high we're power not talking CDH. Goes. No rule zero, no We're complaint. not talking CDH, yeah. I'm just saying a high powered table. If I have like a high powered Kalia deck, it's not CDH. Oh, I don't think both. you can play Armageddon. I don't there. think you play it. What? You, you play I think you can only play Armageddon CDH. Turn three, like turn two Signet, turn three Kalia, Turn four, swing in, drop like an Avison, and then uh, Jokel hops or whatever. You know, like is that not fair for <laughs> high power? <laughs> for high power, like if we're like what high would you power. Say that is as a number. Just I mean, that's it's probably yeah. an eight or a nine yeah. if it's a win condition. I mean, I, I, I would, I would be an eight. I, if, I do believe with. I agree with Tomer that I actually seven. think that no, it's eight, like nine. If he wanted to play an Armageddon in a non-CDH game, 
that is definitely fine if you are letting people know that it is your like high power deck. Like the, yeah. uh, example, like I play humility in my super friends deck, and I let people know this is my strongest deck. I don't want you to Do play you, your weakest if I deck. An Specifically, tell them you are playing humility. Yeah. Yeah, I tell them I... I've got humility, and it's gonna, it's gonna. The whole game plan is to lock you out so you can watch me use my planes walk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. And, this is disgusting. And, 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 that's, and like, that's where the cool. Kalia probably would be like okay at that table, right? Like you bring in humility, you can lock me out. But I can also like lock you out on. Yeah, yeah. Like, and and I think that the expectations are then. Do we just remove that from everybody? No commander player is allowed to play these. I don't think I've ever had anyone cast an arm again against me in all the games what? I've played with people. No, no, at a, like a command fest. Like, at a command fest, at a magic con. Like, have you ever had that happen? Have you ever got uh, arm again at a command fest? No, because everyone has banners. Because everyone know. knows it's banned. I've been ruinated. <laughs> It's just, uh, like, I've been ruinated too, actually. Ruinated. All my base, all my non basics when I was playing my five color deck, so I was dead. But, but funny enough, the game I got ruinated, I had some of the most fun you could have asked for out of that. Like, have you ever you been blood moon? No, 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 no. I got ruinated, so I got dumpstered. Uh, I've been blood moon at a con convention. Oh yeah, you? oh yeah. I, I've actually Back been blood moon at yeah. lower power level pods too. Oh, and it mono rats. red deck. Like, if you're, are you upset at the mono red deck like goblins? Yeah. If they're just like, okay, well, I'm gonna play Blood Moon, or like the mono blue Merfolk deck, back to basics. Yeah, back to basics. Oh, wait, we're just gonna ban it now? Okay, okay. Yeah, see, like, I. I to wrap that's... up the podcast, I need your conclusion. So, currently, Commander is at a certain point on the casual competitive scale. You tell me if you think it's in the right spot, it should get more casual or it should get more competitive. Is that the same? Right? So, we, we've laid forth arguments for both ends, and you tell me which way you want the needle to move for the format. You'll never guess. So, Krim, I think we know your point of view. Which way do you want the needle to move? I need it to move just a little bit more towards away from casual. Yeah. Okay. Seth? Uh, I think I actually overall, not for the same reasons, but I think Commander would be better if it got a little bit more competitive. But I think it's overall in, like, a reasonable spot. I don't want to see it get more casual, like, even more casual, though. I think I've reached kind of peak casualness. I think it's too casual, so. I feel like it's kind of fine as it is, because as soon as I say, ooh, more casual, I say, like, less complaining. But also, I like casual games, and I like me having fun. I like popping. So let's say I like where it is right now. It's just amazing to play. It's fun. I, I like it right where it is. If it, if it was, if I came across people who would be like, no counter spells, and that was like the general norm. Like if it was as as like ultra, don't let everybody play solitaire. If that was the reality of like conventions and stuff, then I would say more competitive. But right now, I just feel like everybody is bringing like sweet decks that are interactive and n not that much complaining. So I'm happy with it right now. Oh, this is a perfect progression. So I'd like it more casual. Wow. I'd like us. I'd like us to codify the casual things rather than make them like these weird secret rules that everyone knows. But yeah. I'm an old man. You know, I used to be the sweaty MMO gamer. I don't What's have time parts, to keep Richard? up with the dude. I don't. I don't have <laughs> orange or purple. What's the highest one? I don't. I don't. I don't have the time to invest in knowing all these like secret rules or catching up with like. Oh, did you read the 50,000 new cards during spoiler season? If not, you can get dunked on, right? You need to know that Imidane is the hottest thing coming out of Eldraine. You know, like, that's too much, right? Like, we need to make it more casual to make it more accessible and codify it, right? I think part of the problem is it's not standardized. It's, like, these secret rules and, like, oh, did you know you can mulligan, like, 50,000? Like, no, no, like, it's just, like, secret rules that no one knows until you're in the in-group. But if we're, like, we'll change the mulligan rule, we'll ban land destruction, you know, we'll make, you know, whatever, right? Like, we'll, we'll cut the clear division between CDH and EDH or whatever. I think that would make it more casual friendly. And we could get, like, actual friends to play Magic the Gathering, not we'll our magic friends. friends. <laughs> yeah, like, can you imagine? Like, I can't imagine inviting random people I know over and be like, let's play Magic the Gathering. They're yeah. like, no, we're going to play Exploding Kittens, right? Yeah. Like, you know? I mean, it works. Exploding Kittens is fun, though. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. So. <laughs> but all the rules are there. Imagine if Exploding Kitten came with, like, 50, <laughs> like, secret rules that nobody knew about. And you're like, build your deck better. You're like, what? <laughs> right? Like, you know, that is fighting against the deck, though. 
and that is fun. Yeah, like true. kittens in a blunder. Yeah. Like you all have counter spells, and you try to counter the blunding. So the we, I say we all just play one piece. <laughs> yo, no, that, that game is sick. That's yo, the yo, that's sick though. <laughs> multiplayer one piece. You know, Lorcana's also multiplayer. Dang. We're just gonna go down and play slots. That's, 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 that's the, the real. Solution. That's the most like that's the most. See, that's, that's PVE. Is the casino yeah. filled that's with PVE. poker games or slots? It's, it's us slots. against the house. It is filled with slots. <laughs> that's us against the house. Yeah, and the house always wins. Said. I mean, sure. All right, so that'll do us. Uh, that'll wrap us up for our Vegas podcast. Uh, how's the hotel room, guys? Hot. Is it hot? A little warm. Is it hot? I like it. Yeah. Also, these lights are not helping. I like it. Oh god. <laughs> I like it. Warm. So, so excuse fun. the jank, and uh, we'll see you here back next week. We're so sweaty. <laughs>